Alrighty guys, now welcome back to Remote Team PS Use. I just picked up this used laptop here, and well, it's an MSI one. And today we're gonna see how to refurbish a laptop in general. Now this one is a gaming laptop. The specs are i7 6700 HQ, GTX 960, half terabyte of SSD, pretty nice, eight gigs of DDR4, and well, just your 1080p screen, nice keyboard, nice chassis. Now the first thing you have to do if you get a used laptop is clean it. So let's get right into that. Alright guys, now here we are outside. I'm gonna use just a random blower. You can also use a compressed air. No watering on this laptop guys, I'm sorry. But I mean, it's kind of a pain watering laptops. I might do it in the future, but you have to pretty much remove the battery and remove the CMOS battery and you often have to like dismount half the machine to do that so it's not very handy so this one we'll do guys let's go okay now step two if WD-40 is cheap in your country then go with that but unfortunately here in Italy it's not so I'm just gonna use some random wipes then I mean you can use whatever you can like use alcohol wipes you can just pour some alcohol, you can pour, I don't know, some water with soap. Um, Cause we are not really like cleaning a motherboard, we're just cleaning a chassis. So for real, you can use whatever. And then you also want to do the same when it's opened up. So right here, you know, especially like the trackpad, it can get kind of dirty. If the trackpad is super dirty, um, like I'd personally wash it with water, like remove the, um, remove this upper chassis and then wash it with water and soap and it's gonna get real clean but like this one is pretty much brand new so I mean just a quick wipe will do and now the screen now for the screen you really don't have to worry like people are like use a specific product eh, not really just go with whatever you have uh, but it may leave like some marks bubbles and if it does then you might want to use something better All right, this is about it. It's looking like way better than before. And it just took two, literally two wipes. So here it is, guys. Cleaned up the computer. Ooh, looking nice, they tell me. That's good. Now let's get into the actual software stuff to do. I was nearly forgetting the charger. I mean, this thing is gonna go around in your room. You really don't want it to be dirty. So yeah, just use some wipes on that as well. And it's gonna be good to go guys okay now here we are with most gaming laptops now this one is an MSI G626 QD Apache you just have to remove those screws and then you can take the lid off now once we are here um, we can simply replace the CPU and the GPU quite easily you know it's just eight screws and removing the fan so we're gonna do just that Okay, now as it often is with laptops, there was a little bit more screws, now we had four here, four here, and then around four each for every one of the fans, so yeah. But now we can just remove it. Now I don't know if the previous owner already replaced them, uh, okay, no he didn't, clearly. Alright, now as you can see there are a ton of like um, cables going towards the fans, so you might want to detach those, or you can like just kind of you know remove them from here and have like your fan sit on the air for a little while which is what I'm gonna do um, now let me get you a closer look so here it is now this one is our CPU this one is our GPU and here we have some ter some thermal pads now I'm just gonna hold it like this and clean it off and then apply the new face because I can't be bothered with dismounting it Now the thermal paste was so dry I actually had to use like some regular paper and uh, well it also like did not come off it like went into pieces so I'm, now I'm just gonna do one of these bad boys 
and just you know to make it fall down please thank you good and now we're gonna apply the new one which is my good old gd900 with the broken uh, spreader and so i'm gonna put a ton of thermal paste and so people are gonna get triggered so yeah enjoy now it's really difficult to apply it but when you also have to like film it um yeah so yeah i feel like it's gonna be a lot of thermal paste you know i just have this feeling maybe i'm wrong though oh, fuck <laughs> yeah it's gonna be good enough um yeah it kind of went everywhere enjoy the look uh, but again it's gonna be fine uh, i also ordered like three new tubes and the new ones are actually intact so i will uh, like still put too much but less of a mess uh, like doing not this much mess so yeah and well we are pretty much done guys let me just finish off the cpu real quick Whew. such a nice coverage just look at it flawless guys press application let me just close it up and by the way since we are at it let me repeat it for the 100th time all right now is this the optimal way to apply thermal paste? No. But is this gonna matter, guys? Like, performance-wise, thermal-wise, is this gonna make a difference? Well, the answer is no, <laughs> all right? And that's why I do it, you know? Cause to show that, like, if you put too much paste, what's gonna happen is, um, if you tighten the screws enough, it's gonna, like, spread you know, and the, the paste in excess is gonna go over to the sides, all right? Now, if it goes over to the sides, nothing bad is gonna happen, you know? Um, the point is that you just have to put not too little. Like, if you put too little, it's gonna thermal throttle, all right? You can get hot spots, really not the best to put too little. But yeah, if you put too much, no biggie. And also I hate plugging in the Wi-Fi cards because my hands are too big. Flow. I really should start to use pliers, but again, we are nothing watching PSUs, I can't be bothered. So yeah, this is gonna be a video about me putting on those things for 10 minutes straight, guys. Enjoy. Alright, jokes aside. And here we are, guys, with the magic of cutting stuff. Alright. Now, as you can see, it's closed up now we're just gonna slap the you know li little shroud over it and it's done all right now here we are on the software side now i still have to get a capture card so we'll have to you know make do with this kind of camera work now the first thing you want to do even like if the guy who sold it to you said that like he already formatted it and it's, it's already clean uh, you just wanna, you know, pretty much format it again. Now, you can either do this by using a handy USB uh, with Windows on it. You, you can also make it unattended if you want to. Uh, or you can do the quick and easy route, which I kind of recommend, I mean, if you're on a laptop. Um, and it's simply, you know, go over to settings, updates and security. And then here, you will have the option to reset it. So you just go and uh, reset your computer, start, and you just go remove everything. And now here, you wanna set to delete data. Then you hit, uh, you know, this one, then it will prompt you again. If you're sure, you just say yes. And boom, here we go, guys. Now, once you've done that, the next thing you want to do is to quite simply uh, you know, install all of your updates. So you just go over on settings, you know, updates and security, and you just let him do his things. Now, once everything is installed, I've already done it. You want to optimize your windows like I do after every fresh install. Now I have a full tutorial about that. So just click on this video right here. If you want to see that, like that also gives you a quite sizable performance boost, like Sometimes in low-end laptops, it gives you like 30%, which is quite insane. Then after you've done that, you want to update your drivers. Of course, even that is explained in that video right here. 
and then we can get into some performance tuning. But aside from that, your laptop is pretty much ready to game and it has been refurbished. So this guy is pretty much ready, like I can just give it to somebody and they can game on it. But if you want to go the, if you want to go the extra step, you might want to overclock your GPU. Now in this case, we have a GTX 960M. So, you know, we can just use MSI Afterburner and here we go. Now, um, to overclock your GPU, you pretty much just have to open up a benchmark. I recommend Heaven benchmark, you open it up. And while it's running, you just test how much of this slider you can pull, but pretty much you can usually max it out on laptops. And then you just test out how much memory you can get. Now, in this case, this is how much we can get. And then after that, you might want to undervolt the laptop. Now this really decreases your temperatures and so it decreases the noise. So it's great now to do that. I have a full tutorial, which again, up here, but in short, you pretty much want to use throttle stop and just lock in the maximum safe undervolting. Now in this case, I have an i7 6700HQ and with this exact CPU, I have the tutorial. So I, again, I want to be doing it again, but I mean, now we will do all of this off camera, and then we can just run a fire strike to just take a look at what the performance looks like. All right, now we undervolted everything, and here we are with a stress test. I ran Intel Barn tests on standard. As you can see, we passed, and now the CPU is undervolted uh, by 125 megahertz, um, sorry, by 125 millivolts. Uh, and that, coupled with a new thermal based application, allow us to stay at around 80 degrees max under full synthetic load. Now this is simply great because this allows us to keep the max turbo, which is um, 3.1 gigahertz on this i7-6700HQ for the whole test. And this is a synthetic one, so it means that in game it will stay at full turbo the whole time. Now let's just quickly test the GPU, uh, but you know, when it comes to the CPU, I'm quite impressed. And I will also run a quick bench here on CPU-Z. Um, and now, as you can see, we are hovering at around 1880 on the multi-threading, which is good. And the single thread score is pretty good. Um, 370, 78, that's good. Um, you know, with this single, with this single thread score, it means we, like this CPU could run at an 80 without many problems. Now, let me just compare it to a first gen Ryzen. And as you can see, it's better than a first, first gen Ryzen in single thread. So that's good. All right, let's, let's get into the GPU testing. And here we are with the five track results. Not too bad for low end PC, as you can see. We have 4,680 total score which means that, you know, this computer will be able to handle 1080p gaming fine. Like a GTX 960M, um, you know, now that it's overclocked especially, it's like pretty much like a GTX 1050 for laptops, maybe a little bit better than a 1050, not quite there with a 1050 Ti, but still like playing games on competitive settings, you know, on low, um, or on a blend of, you know, low, medium and high. It's gonna do an absolute fine job. So yeah, this is how you refurbish a laptop, guys. It's looking quite well, if I'm, even though I'm saying it myself, you know, I, I run some B-rolls real quick. And well, remember, just clean it up, replace the thermal paste, do some software optimizations, and you're ready to go, guys. It really doesn't take that much to make a laptop brand new.